It's time to make our Porsche truck an actual truck. We're gonna throw some aluminum sheeting across the floor, the sides, and the top, and actually make this thing a proper bed. We'll be transporting all of our toys in the Porsche truck. What? We can go pick up three wheelers now. A lot had to happen to get to this point. We had to get our rear wall completely sheathed in. All this is gonna get ground down. It's gonna get bondoed, smoothed out, but it's at least welded shut. It's like legit solid. I'm pretty fired up. A lot of you guys commented that we're losing all rigidity. I think we have gained that rigidity back. We really added a lot of framing to this. It's tied in multiple places across the front. This is tied into our actual like chassis and it's welded to the back of the car. So it's reconnected all of that material. I'm willing to bet this thing is back to at least as strong as it was or close. By the end of this video, it's gonna look like an actual truck. You guys stay tuned. Let's make this thing a truck. Now the reason to keep those doors open as long as possible. Oh my god, we have a truck bed. Yeah, dude. I mean, genuinely stoked. I mean, obviously this is just like slapped up. We need to template everything, but this is a freaking truck, dude. You guys, this is insane. The we keep saying it, but the Porsche truck is really a truck now. The vision is coming to life before our eyes. By the end of this video, we'll be transporting some stuff in the Porsche truck. Dude, and how good does the aluminum look? And we might end up truck lining it, but I think this looks good. Yeah, that, that's something maybe you guys can help with. Do you like the raw aluminum look or do we slap some, uh, what is the truck bed lining called? Raptor liner? Raptor? Linex? There's a bunch of different ones. Like spray on bed liner in there to have it be like a real truck. There's pros and cons to each. Let us know what you guys think. I mean, this thing is a Porsche. It's supposed to look slick and sleek and fast. So I feel like you gotta keep the aluminum. See, that's where I think a nice black bed liner just like kind of ties everything together. So we got disagreement here. You guys gotta help settle it. Just seeing the mock-up, I'm like, I wanna get this done. <laughs> A few moments later. I'm just currently regretting everything. <laughs> this is not gonna be as easy as we thought, surprise. I thought we were gonna be able to just like put the bed in and deal with the tailgate later. Unfortunately, we kind of have to make some decisions about the tailgate in order to make the aluminum go in because we can't cut this aluminum more than once. Like it was crazy expensive. This corner is a huge headache because it's rounded and what we're trying to make is not rounded. And before I can do any aluminum, I have to cut like matching this line down and matching this line across so that this whole pocket is gone, which means our aluminum can come in. That's what you gotta do. Custom car, custom problems. And we want this to be nice. Oh, I'm very sad about it though. It's almost like this car wasn't supposed to be a truck. <laughs> Had to put on the welding cap while the sparks were getting through the mesh. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hair left up there. I can't be burning what little follicles I have left. Rad Factory has are good for a lot of things, but not welding. So if you get one at theradfactory.com, just know that you can't weld with it. We're officially gonna have to start cutting some plastic. We should just take the plastics off. I just wanna put the bed in. But no, we're gonna keep doing fits until there's aluminum in this truck, I swear to God. Future Gavin will be happy that we did this. Current Gavin is in a mood. <laughs> This was the cause of all of our problems. This is the source of all of our new problems. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have to take some like eighth inch plate and make our own little tiny angle iron. The pro is it did what we wanted. Like now the aluminum is gonna fit perfectly in there. Dylan's amount of work didn't change. <laughs> he still has to edit this video either way. <laughs> That's just how we split the work. That's yeah. the way it goes. Well, let's see if we can duplicate that on this side and then I'll get to work polishing both of those turds and then we can hopefully finally throw our sheet metal or our sheet aluminum on the floor. I'm thinking something about like that. It's gonna suck. That's the answer to how that gets welded is a lot of swear words. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going back to the computer then. 
All right, we got the first corner done, and it's possible I was overreacting, but I'm not gonna tell that to Dylan. She's tacked in, and it came out pretty decent. I've got some holes drilled in there so I can reach all of our pieces. That'll be dialed. Now I just gotta repeat it on this side. Look at it, dude. It's a truck bed. You got the corners all dialed in. I don't know if I could be much happier. Like this is about as good as someone could do. It is a full on work truck now. <laughs> like it looks exactly like those work trucks that have the big uh, yeah, the square, big yeah. Boxes. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this looks like once we trim up these tops. Cause this just looks unbelievable. Like that doesn't flex at all. So I'm very happy with going with quarter inch. It was expensive and a huge hassle, but that was the right call. I think we're almost perfect. From my crazy brain to reality, the Rad Factory and Gavin made it happen. This is very, very cool. I'm so stoked. When you're building a Porsche truck from scratch, there's absolutely no plan. But if you're trying to go off-roading in said Porsche truck, it's super easy to plan using today's sponsor, Onyx Off-Road. This project has definitely turned into more than we bargained for. Thanks to Onyx Off-Road's trail guides with photos and ratings, you always know what you're in for. And thanks to the route builder feature, you don't have to worry about coming up with a plan. You just select where you want to go, tell it where you are now, and it'll build you the best route from where you are to where you want to go. Unlike this, which I have to come up with a new plan, it seems like every five minutes. <laughs> You can even share your routes with your friends to make sure nobody gets lost and you're always on the same page. Unlike Gavin and I that seem to always have different ways of doing things. But I did cut a straight line just like you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Much like this cardboard, we get a ton of use out of our Elite membership. Go to onxoffroad.com to start your free trial. If you like it as much as we do, use code RADFACTORY at checkout and get 20% off. Just arts and crafts time. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what this looks like. But this is gonna be a really tough cut to get right and it's gotta be pretty exact. Otherwise it's not gonna look good. We are gonna have a little bit of a lip, like one of those little plastic drop-in bed liners. Uh, so it should hide some of our issues, but I'd like there to be no issues, <laughs> so. Seen better, seen worse. When we make this out of aluminum, my guess is we're gonna have to like belt sand it to the final shape anyways. But this should help us at least get awfully close. So right now, I'm designing this to like overhang a lot more than it will when we're finally done. I just don't know what all this is gonna look like yet. So I wanna have a good healthy amount of extra. In all actuality, this will wrap around and like tie directly into whatever closes our cab in. Consider me nervous. You don't want to mess it up, but I've used a jigsaw before, so I can't imagine I will mess it up. But then again, maybe I will. I wanted a little bit extra on that guy. This is exciting. Something's about to happen. This aluminum costs more than we made on YouTube last month, so please cut straight. No pressure. You know, high pressure, high results. That's the name of the game here. I'm more nervous for my skin doing this than I am doing most welding. Aluminum sucks to cut. Moment of truth, did we ruin an expensive piece of aluminum? I don't think we did. Damn. Oh my gosh. Dude, it's really good. There's gonna be a lot of sanding, but it's solid. You'd be hard pressed to ask for something better. A water jet, maybe. Uh... It looks like a freaking truck, my guy. Porsche couldn't have done it better themselves. No, dude, no shot. Germans are famous for their unreliable mechanical technology and in no way are known for their craftsmanship and or skill in this arena. Dude. You mean they don't use jigsaws to build their cars? Porsche, I believe in you. Yeah, you'll, you'll get there. So this is definitely long, which means we'll bring it in that way a little bit, and I think that'll be nice. Sick. This will get a lip, a small lip around the whole outside. Something like this. It won't be exactly like this, obviously. 
but pretty close. You get the idea anyways. And that'll kind of cover our gaps and just make sure everything looks crisp. Chop that straight and uh, that'll kind of be our, our end for now. So we do have a track saw, which will help us make some square, nice straight cuts. Obviously can't do that for that big round one. Well, forgot to put our ear protection on and regretted that immediately. That's factory. That is a crisp cut. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Piece of work. Piece of art. Dude, that looks genuinely cool. Cooler than I think most people thought it would be. And it's back to looking pretty sleek. Like when this is done, it's gonna look genuinely sleek. Ah! -ha -ha! That's so cool. What do you think the odds are that template matches the other side? Like I did such a good job cutting this car in half that it is literally identical. I don't know, you, you've come a long way in the less than a year of the channel. So I think you got it. I think you did it. So far, almost everything has like matched side to side pretty good. If I didn't know any better, that's a match. Yo, that's unbelievably dope. Well, that saves me having to cardboard template this side. That's huge. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's real. It's all just kind of taped and held up, but this is pretty close to what it's gonna look like. It has come together better than we could have ever envisioned, honestly. As far as like not needing to have imagination to understand what we're doing, this is the first time it even remotely looks like it something. We've done it. We've built a Porsche truck. There's no denying it's a Porsche truck right now. Yeah, no, I mean, the next step is literally we just start riv nutting these things on. And then I think we can actually go take this for a drive. There you go. Look at that. That's gonna be fun. We got a special delivery from Amazon. Uh-oh. Come check it out. Ta-da! Hey, nice. <laughs> this will be temporary. We will get a tailgate, but for driving it this weekend, we needed a little cargo net. That'll be perfect. I don't know how much cargo it's gonna hold, but it'll look kind of fun. It at least closes it off. Plus we'll have the tire on there, so it'll kind of be full. It's a legit Porsche truck. It's that time. We're gonna attach the aluminum via rivnut to the actual bed. Here's how it works. This little gnarled section is what actually collapses and binds inside of the hole. And then once it's bound, you just unscrew and it pulls it right out. So essentially it puts threads in things that don't normally have threads. This way you have like a full, you know, three eighths of an inch of thread versus if we just drilled and tapped these, you'd have maybe an eighth. We're gonna use M6 bolts for the tops and for the sides, debating on using M8s for the bottom because we have quarter inch and we can kind of go with a beefier screw. We're officially gonna put some holes in some expensive aluminum. That's one. Jam that guy in there. I mean, that seemed almost too easy. For once, I did buy the nice tool, so hopefully it is actually easy because it's a, a nice tool. As the person who's gonna have to put like a million rib nuts into this car, I'm really grateful. All right, now we just gotta drill out our aluminum for our M6 hole. Big moment. Hey. We will get some flathead screws and countersink them in there eventually. Just for this exact moment, we do not have them. Oh, she threads in nice. <laughs> I covered up every single one of my marks with tape. This is just my life, Dylan. At least we're all here to see it and laugh at you. Well, it's just lovely. Miata is always the answer, even when you're building Porsche up trucks. These are our boxes of Miata parts, and we got the little uh, M6 bolts that we're gonna hold on the aluminum with. Like the Native Americans, we use every part of the kill, and we've <laughs> killed several Miatas. 
That is so much nicer than any time I've tried to drill and tap something. Dude, you could step on that for sure. Oh no. That's why we don't use the nice drill bits for stuff like that. Dude, that doesn't look bad. I can live with that. Now I just need to repeat that on the other side, do it on the bottom. Then we'll be driving it. Like we are not that far off from being able to actually drive this thing for real. It's just gonna go the whole way down the highway. <laughs> This feels like a lot of progress, but so much of it is just kind of like put together. You know, it's not actually like final assembled. I just got overcome with a bit of like overwhelm about how much is actually still left to do. We do still have two months until SEMA, a little over two months. We're doing all right, we're on track, but it is gonna be stressful. It's the end of the day, you can tell. I'm struggling to lift this heavy seat. Dylan almost tripped. <laughs> We're both smoked. I think we've both been at it for like 10 hours. We're on the first test drive of the Porsche up track, heading to the lake to do some jet skiing. It's very rattly. That is the first thing you'll notice. The second thing you'll notice, you guys probably won't be able to hear it, but the sunroof, since we haven't fixed that yet, it's just constantly like whoop, 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 whoop. But if I stick my hand out the sunroof, it stops. So I just have to drive around with my hand out the sunroof the whole time. I love project cars. Oh, it's close. It's close. Uh, what? No way. <laughs> huge news for you, Dill. That is huge news. That's it is exact, too. Perfect, dude. That is actually amazing. <laughs> I guess I'm going to need a three-wheeler now because there's no way to not drive around like this. <laughs> After the first test drive, the buffeting from the no sunroof is unmanageable. We got to do some more driving with it today, so we got to throw the sunroof in real quick. Unfortunately, our sunroof will never move again. We have to chop these rails because there is no more roof there. Cutting aluminum with an angle grinder is terrible every single time, so I'm actually gonna put my protective gear on for once. Hopefully I don't leave here with any more burns than I showed up with, which is not zero, but hopefully it stays at whatever number it currently is. There's that rubber. We do wanna save these because we're gonna actually reconnect our drains at some point, just in the off chance water does get in there. Let's be honest, sunroofs leak constantly. That is technically a sunroof. As long as it takes care of the buffeting, the bed still rattles. We need a lot more bolts into here, but I can deal with that. It's the buffeting that I can't deal with. Of course, the ultimate goal is to put a camper in there, but for now, we're just getting the roof tent back on there, as well as our overlanding awning. This thing's gonna be so overlanding. So the plan is we're just gonna make a super simple bed rack. This will come down and tie onto these pieces, which we're just gonna use our bolts that are already there. First test fit of the rack. Boy, not enough hands. And that's a bed rack. I think that'll work. It's just taller than our roof line, which is what I wanted. Not too much extra space. Look at that, five on the money. Not quite five on the money. Everything's a little hot. Pretty dang close, we're within an eighth of an inch. Pretty close. It looks so much like a work truck right now. It's hilarious, it's so good. Throw a bunch of ladders on the top and go uh, do some house painting. Should be very similar. I mean, they're close. Got me. Pretty dang tacked in. Pretty close to level. I think that's pretty reasonable. It's good enough for building this in two hours. 52-ish, so we need 104. What do you think? Oh. I think not quite long enough. We're trying to brace it on the sides. Oh, Dylan, 
You'd be dead wrong. We're at 109, baby! Oh! I'm happy to be wrong in this case. We have enough scrap material. It will make it much stronger to have it braced front to back. Down. No overlanding rig would be complete without an awning. Luckily, open road sent us one. How's our clearance? On what? On uh, the ceiling. Not, not even close. <laughs> Look at that roof rack gleaming. Let's throw our canopy on there. Okay. Oh boy. So That's it's gonna be... why that thing usually just stays on there. All right. First time it's being used as an actual truck on the pit bike. She fits glorious. Dude, it's sick. The Porsche out truck is officially a truck. Got the D-rings just like any good work truck. Just like we promised, we got a work truck. This thing is so overlandy, so sick. As you can see, we're all packed up. We've got exciting stuff coming. One foot straight and stop. Work truck already has to do work truck things. We are headed to the abandoned racetrack with the Miata and the Ninja three-wheeler. Make sure and subscribe so you don't miss that video coming very soon. Thank you for watching. Stay rad.